Greetings, fellow St. Lucians at home and abroad. Not too long ago, the St. Lucia Labour Party inherited a fiscal mess from the reign of the United Workers' Party, which left us with no fiscal room to maneuver. After four and a half years of hard work and tough decisions to rescue, restructure, and reposition the economy of this country over the period 2011 and 2016 to address the economic and fiscal mismanagement, although we were doing so against the backdrop of a hostile external economic environment, we began to see tangible positive results. We reduced the fiscal deficit from a high of 7.5% of GDP to 2.2% in 2015, 2016, and 1.5% of GDP in 2016, 2017. The year in which the Labour Party's budget was implemented. The Labour Party generated 8,040 jobs between 2012 and 2016. And the year we left office, economic growth was 3.4% one of the highest growth rates in the decade 2010 to 2020. Indeed, all major indicators on the economic dashboard were flashing green and the economy was poised for takeoff to be launched into a period of sustained boom and prosperity. But the people of St. Lucia was persuaded by the false promises of the United Workers' Party and they voted them into office in 2016. They promised to reduce and eliminate VAT, increase economic growth, to cease borrowing, to deliver a complete St. Jude's Hospital project, to implement national health insurance, and to reduce crime. We all vividly remember that they promised the farmers of this country that they could export bananas to France. Therefore, the expectations of most St. Lucians was that the UWP would have utilized the macroeconomic stability and fiscal space to fulfill those promises and improve the quality of life of St. Lucians. Instead, this useless UWP administration spent five years giving CPR to a dead horse called DSH. <laughs> Spending tens of millions of dollars on the expensive ventilators of make-believe foreign direct investment. While the sons and daughters of St. Lucia suffer, while the children of toil are wearing worn-out shoes, patch pants and ragged shirt, over the past five years, the fruits of the labor are financing the pattern of consumption and the extravagance of foreign leeches. Over the past five years, we had a dictatorship wearing the garments of democracy. The huge injustice prevailing in our country in terms of the distribution of wealth and access to social services is causing injury to the democratic fabric of our beautiful island. The UWP is the absolute antithesis of the SLP because we would have utilized the fiscal space to address the pressing but legitimate needs of the people of St. Lucia. When we left office in 2016, while the different programs were taking effect and improving the lives of the people of this country, poor people, and the social fabric that ensures their survival continue to be vulnerable. And therefore, therefore, my brothers and my sisters, the government could have finalized the social safety nets policy framework as we need to target the poor in a more efficient and effective manner. We need to connect in a more direct way poverty eradication with job creation, as this will assist the poor in meeting their immediate needs whilst growing the economy. The eventual goal, if the country has to move to a higher trajectory of development, is employment creation and reduction in the number of citizens dependent on social welfare. And at the same time, the rich and efficiency of social security need to be continued. 
while utilizing fiscal space to take a multi-pronged approach to tackle unemployment. Given the banana shock in this country and that many beaches in St. Lucia is impacted heavily by the Sagasam seaweed to help support people who were into bananas and cannot be retrained, the government should have looked at a social employment program involving cleaning the beaches affected by the Sagasam and marine litter in general. <laughs> Hence, protecting the environment and creating jobs. The improved economic framework could have financed the development of training and education programs to aggressively target the growth sectors in the economy, including the digital economy, and developing a cadre of certified carpenters, mechanics, plumbers, etc., and other construction workers. These strategies would have been given the highest level of funding on the Labour Party administration and institutional support to advance the sectors forward. We should have used funding from Invest St. Lucia, which now seems to be a piggy bank or a cash cow for the FFF. Whilst they closed down Radio St. Lucia, the St. Lucia Fish Marketing Cooperation, they stopped the subvention to the St. Lucia National Trust, removed the distress fund, and terminated the NICE program. But they're busy advancing the savage and criminal neoliberal policies by investing the country's limited resources in the prognosticated failed DSH project. Giving a thousand acres of land at one dollar per acre and significant expenditure to build new diversion road that cost taxpayers in this country 13.6 million dollars which we are still paying for not to mention the relocation of Beausejou and the decommissioning of the Viewfort landfill at significant cost again to the people of this country after five years of being in office it is abundantly clear that the UWP has failed in delivering on the promises to the people of this country and you know Whatever promises they make today for the next dispensation, they will not be able to fulfill it. Because when they had the fiscal space, they squandered it. And now we have no fiscal space and no macroeconomic stability. As a result of their ineptness, incompetence, and mismanagement of the economy, they have plunged St. Lucia into a recession. Into a recession in 2019 the year before the COVID-19 pandemic. In sharp contrast to pronouncements of reducing borrowing, they have engaged in a mad frenzy of borrowing. According to the ECCB, total disbursed outstanding debt increased by 12.4% to $3.9 billion at the end of 2020. St. Lucia accounted for 40% of the increase in stock of public debt for the ECCB countries in 2020. Debt to GDP ratio skyrocketed to 89.8% in 2020, from 61% the year before. With this level of borrowing, we expected St. Lucia to register the lowest contraction, the lowest contraction in GDP. But St. Lucia registered the worst performance in the ECCB with a contraction of 23.8%. Moreover, this abysmal economic performance was accompanied by 8,961 jobs being lost. As a result, income and wealth inequality has been massively exacerbated in this country. The lack of support for small businesses has also resulted in significant closures with many unable to pay their rent and other expenses. The monies borrowed from the IMF, the World Bank, the Caribbean Development Bank, and the Taiwanese government, which amounted to close to $300 million to help and support St. Lucians 
who were negatively impacted by COVID-19 were diverted to implement the projects which benefited the FFF crew. In fact, only 7 million of these funds were allocated for income support. One of the tools used by this UWP in ensuring that only the FFF benefit has been via the direct awards process. Indeed, the economic and fiscal mismanagement of this UWP government has been well documented. The government has again, like in 2011, left an even bigger fiscal mess as it goes for Brooke to win the election. The treasury is currently empty. And there are whispers that government may not have the ability to pay salaries in the coming period. These developments are unquestionably warning signs that our economy needs to be rescued from this inept and incompetent government. In exploring the possible policy permutations for the next decade, the period 2021 to, to 2031, in the context of the imperatives of macroeconomic stability and the challenges of reconstruction and development, Next time I speak to you on the subject of the economy, I will attempt to distill from the budget reviews and other major addresses by our political leader, the Honorable Philip Joseph Pierre. <laughs> the SLP's broad macroeconomic policy approaches and the economic diplomacy we need to pursue, which will constitute a comprehensive, coherent, and coordinated framework to return St. Lucia to macroeconomic stability and fiscal sanity. <laughs> My dear people of this country, over the last five years, Shasne put horses first. We are asking Shasne at the end of his five-year term to move his horse there, to allow Philip Joseph Pierre to put people first, to put people first. Good night, and God bless you, my fellow St. Lucians. I thank you.